No, lockdown is giving me lockdown, so that's it. There's nothing much to it besides following whatever it is that uh, the president said we must do. Are you following everything? I'm trying my level best, I don't know. Are you washing your hands? All the time. Are you not unnecessarily leaving your house to go and visit other people? I No, I don't. Are you not attending funerals that already have more than no. 50 people? No. Are you not kissing? You, do you know we should do no more kissing in South Africa? <laughs> hey, that one is hard. <laughs> yeah, man, when, when you are led by people who are not kissable, they want you to <laughs> not do the things they cannot do. Yeah. Yeah, so Mr. Tony, I don't even need to tell Aband Uguti who you are. We all know who you are. And we are all here because we love you. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's uh, I call it an extra class, but it's not uh, an acting master class in terms of it's not you teaching people how to act. It's um, for me. I'd like to get information, especially now, given what is happening with the. No, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So David just okay. said something as well. I just said. Okay. With uh, yeah, like after this, after the lockdown, after Corona, things are gonna change forever. Yeah, things are no longer that gonna be the same. And in South Africa, actors are already suffering. As we are locked down, majority of actors are not getting paid. Not to mention those who have just moved to Joburg to try and pursue acting. Some of them got locked down. Big my call back. So how does it prepare to survive? Um, I don't know if I heard you. Wrong. You were cutting somewhere, so I don't know if you. Oh. Um, I missed the last sentence you said. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Do you want me to say? I talk. Hello? About, just answer what you had, please. I didn't hear. I didn't hear the couple of the last couple of sentences you said because. Sentence was the most important because that's where the question is. Uh, it's basically given what is happening now. Uh, obviously, the industry will change forever. Things are no longer going to be the same. Yeah. Network is giving me problems. Are you on 5G? Guys, please do forgive. I think we are losing oh, Mr. Tony. Oh, but he will lose my daughter. Can you? Bah. But he, please follow Tony back. Yes, guys, please do follow Tony on Instagram and all his other social media. Haven't seen him in about two years. How, oh, David, you are uh, literally neighbors. You live in the same city. Because you are always busy. Okay, so my first question was, uh, because I think uh, people who are more affected are people in the entertainment industry. In, uh, mm -hmm. Yesterday I was talking to David about comedians, but actors are in the same boat. A lot of them are not yeah. getting paid during the lockdown. Yet people, Baba Fagi Prayer, they must talk to people. They don't understand. With people who have their own problems, people are worried about how they're going to pay their rent. Mm -hmm. uh, and people are busy wanting the entertainment. Uh, so, how do you think an actor must prepare for the post-lockdown? Are things going to change? We're acting with everything that's happening and social distancing. I think it, it, it will affect how um, productions are going to be run. Mm. And mostly, again, you know, um, if we continue to practice social distancing, for those people who have scenes on set where they have intimate scenes, uh, you know, kissing scenes and all those, somehow they will have to come to an end, which will then affect the writers and how they have to think of how they rewrite scenes to make sure that, you know, the protection of, of, of the actors is intact. But more than anything, um, Maybe before we even get to that, we, we also need to think of how actors get themselves into, into these positions, how they're not creating their own work, how they are not um, getting to a point where they use their talent as business. Like, for instance, I'll give you an example of something that has been bothering me for some time. Um, 
you know, actors, I mean, actors live through their talent. If they don't act, there's no, they can't live a life. But in most cases, you find that they take that and they give it into the hands of their agents. And most especially in South Africa, which is, you know, the business is, is it's a little bit different than South Africa. Um, so it's like all their business in terms of acting, they give it to the agent. So it seems as if agents are now the employers of actors while it has to be in another in, in, in the other way. So like for instance, if an actor needs to go and get a car or maybe apply for a home loan or something like that, um, they will have to go to their agent for their agent to give them like a three month bank statement and so on and so forth for them to be able to do that. So the mentality, it's still dependent on the managers, your 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 agent to just facilitate basically what they're doing what the agents and managers are doing is just to facilitate a transaction and you give them whatever so going to 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 what people earn so the taxman takes 25 percent of your salary and then the agent monthly if maybe if you if an actor is on a on a soapy or on these telenovelas um, the agent monthly takes money away for what it's that still puzzles me i i, I don't know and I've sometimes never... the agent doesn't even get to the audition the production calls you directly for the role exactly sometimes you find it or your friend calls you to say hey there's an audition happening and the next thing you get the job and then they are the ones who then in the end of the month asking for whatever that 12 15 whatever percent it is so basically at the end of the day the actor 50 percent of the actor's salary is gone mm. to the taxman and to the agent and the managers so that in itself actors need to wake up to that and look into how they can make their talent to become their business more than taking their talent or their business throwing it into someone else's hands for that person to ask money from them okay nice uh, we we have upasi correctly saying that it's so true and then we have desmond to i mean desmond to hi hey. guys thank you for joining us i see owning your intellectual property and Mina, I'm a big believer in owning our intellectual property. Uh, so how does an actor do that? Because number one, not every actor is a creative. Not every actor is a writer. Some people are just actors. Not every actor is, wants to be a director. So as an actor, how do you own your intellectual property? What can you do? Well, you, well, you don't have as an actor you don't have intellectual property but what you have is performance rights mm. so your performing rights like means um whatever you bring into the role that is your own interpretation that is your own talent coming into the fore and making what that story is supposed to be or what that character has it's supposed to be because mm -hmm. basically when you get the script only the only thing that you're getting is just words written yes. on a piece of paper so you take those words you give them emotions you give them a persona you give them your face so that in itself that's why um in the in the in the amendment of the copyright act there's what we call the performance protection bill yes. which protects us as performers for for specifically uh rendering performances in everything that we do whether being a musician a poet, an actor, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of us in that. As long as you perform, you will be protected under that. But uh, in South Africa, there seems to be a problem with that because I know in some countries, like I have a friend in America who did a big movie in the 90s. And every day, not every day, every month, he still he gets, gets a minimum. Of five thousand dollars 
from the royalties. Yes. If they sell it to well, Netflix, in... you get a share. If they sell it wherever they sell it, wherever they syndicate it, it gets a share. In South Africa, we see things that uh, we've been part of, even as producers, but we don't see mm -hmm. a penny. Well, that's true because um, our legislation sometimes protect, protects the producers and they, it protects the broadcasters when it comes mm. to that. And that's why you find that the, the contract that you sign with the SABC is different from the contract that you sign with ETV is different from the contract that you sign at Mnet. But somewhere, somehow, they have found a way to protect themselves not to pay you. Yes. For residuals or repeat fees or what they call royalties. So, and then I think, and that's one of, one of the reasons why um, the fight for the copyright amendment bill to be to be to be reviewed before it can be signed. I know a lot of people are saying it must be signed, it must be signed because they think that they're gonna get royalties. But they they are not aware that the copyright amendment bill and the the performance protection bill, because those are two bills, they are cross reference. In them being cross reference, that means the other one says this about this and the other one says this, and somewhere they are not speaking the same language. And if it's signed like that, that means if, if let's say for instance, the copyright amendment bill says whoever pays owns, and then the protection, the performance protection bill says you must be paid royalties whenever the series is repeated or something like that. Mm. So what happens is that if it's signed like that, where the other one says yes, you must be paid, the other one says whoever pays owns, that means if the producer gets that, or the person who paid for the series, he says, I paid this thing for this thing and I own it. So you can't tell me what to do with it. And then you come back and says, no, but the legislation says you must, you must pay me. So that, in other words, means that you then have to go to arbitration. Or you then have to get a lawyer to go to court and try to argue this thing. And tell me which actor in South Africa would be able to stand in court with one of these big, um, let's say, whether you're ETV or Mnet or the SABC in court for over the period of eight months fighting for royalties. Hey, it becomes a problem. And also it becomes a problem because if you speak out, there's always someone ready to take the role that you are, 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 are trying to negotiate. It always well, becomes a problem. I'm getting a lot well, of questions about whether you should have an agent. Is it easier to get auditions that way? Yeah, and I see Desmond is also asking another question saying, do you think the industry must be regulated? Yes. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that the industry must be regulated because regulation, that means that there will be certain formalization and standardization by the industry to say, like for instance, just to make an example, we, we, really, we truly don't know who's an actor, who knows, who's not an actor. Ish. Somebody else come in from wherever they come from and come into, you know, Try their luck. Says, you know, I like this acting thing. I just want to As see. As an extra, only a Jola 99. Do you, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, the, the, the regulation of the industry, it, it, it's highly needed in, in South Africa. We need to put standards. We need to formalize the sector so that, you know, uh, we can do away with unnecessary and professionalism. Mm. Yeah. And then in, in the issue of agents, please. Agencies. Yeah, do we need them? And do you get more auditions if you have one? Well, the issue of agencies, we, we, we just have to structure the relationship better. Because what the agencies are doing, in, in my view, I mean, there are other, I'll give you an example, and I've been saying this forever. There are other agencies who are part of some union of actors. Mm. And to me, I don't see how labor brokers and a union can come together and agree on something. Usually, in, in anywhere in the world, labor brokers and unions they're at loggerheads. It's only in South Africa where you find some leadership of agencies are in the union 
that is representing the actors and so on. So there's a bit of confusion that I, 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 I don't buy in terms of that. But in, in, in the true sense of the word, the relationship between the actors and agencies and managers have to be reviewed. They have to be revisited and we truly formalize and standardize things in terms of how, what is their position, why are they there, and how, they, how can they help the actor. And the actor must understand that, you know, their talent is their business. Without your talent, you will not make money. You will not yep. uh, uh, forget about popularity. You think more of how to make money, uh, how to build wealth with your talent, and how to take your talent as a business. And uh, now, this day and age, your technology, we have a lot of uh, social influencers who are usually talented for being talented. I mean, who are usually famous for being famous not necessarily an ounce of talent but when you as tony gets booked yeah. uh, for a job they get paid more or they can end up getting a job over someone who's very talented because they have a following on social media so what what, what how do actors compete with that because sometimes if we, even if they call you for an audition they want to know what you're following on social media that's true and i that i always um i i don't i don't i don't believe in that but, you know, people have been arguing with me and saying that, look, I need marketing for my show. If I want to put so-and-so because he's got a such and such a following and he's bringing about 1.5 million viewers to my, to, my, to my show because of her Instagram following, um, why should I pay for marketing? Uh, uh, well, why should I pay for marketing? Well, I can just get this person who can bring me this. And if I have four of them, that means I have about... Four million viewers. Uh, I mean, I from experience, what I can say is, uh, your social media following does not convert to viewers, because as a stand-up comedian, I do shows. Collectively, I have all, almost a million. If I put together all my social media followers, I can never do even a five thousand seater. So just because people so follow you on social media doesn't necessarily mean that uh, they are going to watch everything you're doing or they are willing to pay to support whatever project you are part of. And secondly, should we then dilute the quality of the productions because of social media numbers? That's true. Yeah, and then other people, you know, other people are followed on, on social media and not because they are talented. Some of them, you know, is because maybe they're posting nude pictures and some of them. Underwear. You know, they things like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, um, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's an argument that still goes on. And I, in, in, in my view, I prefer talent than any of that. Someone must stand there, audition their heart, then put their talent on, 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 on tape. And then that's how people must be judged. Mm. Not because of their... their, their their Instagram following and stuff like that. that. That's the same problem we have in comedy. People think because they have one viral video or because they have a following, they can just come and be given uh, shows and be just booked for shows. But they haven't proven themselves. They haven't done open mics. They haven't performed. And they think just because they have numbers. And when you tell them, OK, you have numbers, go and do your own show. They can't even have four people buy tickets to come and see them from their following. That's true. That's true. Mm. You know, there's another thing that is very interesting that is coming into the fore now. I was listening to uh, Gudrano and Deboho mm -hmm. talking about the, the commercial that Deboho is doing. So basically, Deboho, what he did, he, he, he directed the commercial from his couch, basically. So the actors were somewhere in another place. And, and all this happened due to the COVID-19. Mm. So the actors yeah. were in another place. Um, and so everything was done digitally, right? He was directing digitally and stuff like that. So the actors were there with the camera, um, with certain lighting put on. They, are not, you know, they have a night and day scene and so on and so forth. So what interests me is that, and he was saying, 
So I was thinking that there's no DOP, there's whatever. And he was explaining like, no, there was no DOP. The actors put the camera there and then they angle it and you will just tell them that, you know, pan to the left or pan to the right or sit in a certain way so that they can get that. And then on the other side, wherever they are, they are able to to play with an ISO on the camera or, or, or work on the menu on the camera without physically being there, you know. Mm. I'm thinking, okay, that's another job for, for, for an actor, yeah. So you become your own cameraman. If, let's and say that's another going, job done for a DOP, though. Exactly, but that's, let's say we go into that space where I have to put a camera on myself and pan it myself and tilt it or crane it to whatever angle. So mm. what does that mean now? If the, 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 the playing field now is changing, so we also it need is to changing, look especially after these things are really going to change. Because if yeah. you look here uh, in the US, even, even Trevor Noah is doing the show from his couch in his own house. All the shows, Wendy Williams, all the shows they are doing, and some of them are even saying, what's the point of renting a studio and so many people for something I can do in my own house? And yeah. some of them are even using phones because phones can shoot 4K. So the money you are... <laughs> You, you are paying your DOP with, which is a lot of money. You are realizing now, which I will, I'm still getting the same number of views. Uh, I'm shooting with my phone, comfort of my home. I'm saving so, so much. So going back, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs anyway. Yeah, that's true. And then that, it will also depend on um, the issue of saying that, you know, actors are not interested in writing or some of them are not interested in acting, I mean, in, in directing maybe the attitude has to change a little bit. Maybe people need to push themselves into another space of realizing that, you know, acting, in, acting alone, and more especially in this era, is not enough. Uh, I've got a thing, Tony, I'm sorry. I need to, I don't want to lose this. Tyson Dickhoff, I don't like reading people's names because I'm never sure if I'm reading it correctly, if I'm pronouncing it right. Uti, why are we having same actors in almost all soapies? What leads do that? Uh, don't we have new actors? Can I answer and then I, 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 I'll hand it over to you. For me, I find it unfair for people to expect actors not to keep on getting work. Because if you say we, we keep seeing the same people, if you go to your supermarket, do you ever complain that you keep seeing the same uh, cashier? I, acting is a job. Actors need to, to, to feed their families. Actors have bills. So they can't act once every two years just because people can't keep seeing the same faces. I think it's very unfair to expect that of actors because any other job, nobody ever goes to a school and say, why do we keep uh, seeing the same teachers? Don't we have new graduates who want to be teachers? I don't know about you, Tony. What do you think on that point? Um, I understand that maybe the person who's asking the question is also asking the question from saying that if I've seen this person playing the same character for the fourth time on four different soapies and four different... In terms of that, typecasting. Do, do we not have any other actors beyond this person who can do this? Mm. If it's from that angle, then I, I, I truly support the person to say, you know, um, yes, yeah, I, mean, I mean, I you remember, yes, you remember there was a, there was also an outcry that um, uh, opening up the industry, you know, there was yes. someone who, who was, uh, I mean, a lot of young actors and most particularly the actors were coming from, from, from high leaning institutions. Mm. We've studied drama and so on say, you know, we're coming, we've studied this thing, we're coming to the industry, but we're not given a chance to, to prove ourselves, you know. Um, we only see the same faces over and over and over again. And sometimes you will find that, um, you know, other producers prefer those people because, you know, some of them, they won't talk too much. Some of them, they'll just go with whatever, even if they're given two of them. Some of them, I don't know about the Nyash, but some of them, you know, <laughs> will give them two rent. <laughs> and they will say yes to that two rent forever. Because they yes. know that if they call Tony or they call someone else, it's going to question the value of two rand. Why are you giving me two rand? Can you give me, you know? I almost, became, I almost became the national mate. And I don't know. I don't want to be on TV just as a mate. 
Okay. I, I literally almost became, everyone who was writing thought of me as a maid. So, wow. yeah, it's typecasting your Niapor. No, it is. It is. It, it is a bit irritating. And, and sometimes I think, you know, even our, our, our broadcasters, sometimes they compete using us. Yes. Talent. Yes. You know, and then they will say, okay, oh, we want someone like so-and-so, like they have it on the other one. And then the mm. producer will say, oh, we can get that guy. Uh, in Hollywood industry, it's doing very well, man. Uh, and from what I have observed is, number one, they do not wait for the middleman. And an actor is not just an actor. Most of their actors, they also produce, they write, they, 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 they do a lot more than just acting. And yeah. uh, they are very united as well. Uh, not necessarily friends, but when it comes to to working, they 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 do their own things. As South Africa, most of the things still do not belong to the talent. What can we do get to compete with uh, or to what can we learn that Nollywood is doing right that we can learn from as our artists of South Africa? You know. Um... Like, you know, places like Nollywood, uh, or even in Ghana as well, mm. uh, the industry is booming there mm. um, because they have learned to organize themselves and they have learned to speak with one voice when it comes to issues that affect them. Mm. And until we as South Africa, I think, we get to a point where we can organize ourselves, hear ourselves, know what we want and why we want what we want, and if any force from outside come and try to shake that, we can be able to stand and say, we are not moving from here until we get what we want. Until then, we are going nowhere. And that's what makes these guys from Nollywood strong. If Kunle, mm. Kunle was here at the Durban International Film Festival, um, he was doing like his fourth movie in one year. I'm like, how do you do it? They had mm. that thing working together as well to say, okay, fine, we're going to sacrifice the next two months. Uh, so they will get, maybe say, okay, let's get our, the actors that we want, this and guy and that guy and that guy and that guy. Say, Listen, we don't have money, but we have equipment, we have locations, let's go shoot this thing. And we're shooting it to make sure that it comes the best thing that can ever come out. So it's hard in, in South Africa, it has become hard for us to do that, to say, Let's join hands as, as, as local talent and sacrifice the next two months. Because I think we see each other as competition. And exactly. we, all, we have this mentality of wanting to be employed. We're waiting yeah, well, for someone to give us our big break. Exactly. So we, we're always looking for, for someone to give us a job. We depend on other people to give us something. We don't want mm. to create for ourselves. Opa says, let talk, let's also talk about women losing their jobs because they are pregnant. Oh, that's another one. That is, uh, you know that thing, right? It started, uh, I once experienced that when I was on Isidinko back in 1997. Mm. Uh, and it was uh, Manaka Ranak. She used to play Nandipa before the Nandipa that people know played Nandipa. Mm. And the reason for them to replace her, it was because of that. Even though they came up with some other mm, wishy-washy story, but we knew that that was the reason. And, you know, mm. it didn't sit well with us until we left, until we left the, the show. So... And I'm happy that even the Department of Labor has already, you know, tried to welcome these kind of things and looking into the TV and film industry to make sure that, uh, you know, the industry is taken serious. Mm. So things like those, you, they cannot happen. People should not allow those kind of things to happen. Fellow actors must not allow a fellow female actor to lose a job because she felt pregnant. 
pregnancy mm. is a beautiful thing and a pregnancy is a natural thing and it, 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 it has a knock on effect because if you lose a job because you're carrying a child it ends up even affecting the relationship you have with your your, your child yes because it's even, the reason for you to lose a job yeah and then what the thing see that's another thing what are these agents saying when they are when their clients so to speak are, are losing are losing are losing jobs because they are pregnant what is their input to that what are these unions so-called access unions saying about those issues why are they keeping quiet it's not the first time this thing happens yeah ne? yeah boy. uh your wife. What is she saying? You are outside of the country a lot. Is it because of better pay or work opportunities? Uh, yes, they pay better overseas. Uh, that's mainly because uh, the currency are corner compared to the rent is usually in one, like your dollar, your pound. But working conditions. Uh, the opportunities and the respect that I get. Uh, I think it too, uh, you can never be a prophet in your own town. Is that what the African proverb says? I have no idea. Yeah, All you I cannot be a prophet in your own town. The respect and the bookings that I get, it, actually on my YouTube channel, I, I put a uh, thing this morning, uh, the, the last a birthday party I did, which was a, a sweet 16. Someone flew me from South Africa to America to come and MC a sweet 16 and paid me handsomely. And they flew, flew me business class. Now in South Africa, where I even have an audience, they will put you on mango <laughs> if you are lucky. Uh, I've even had a producer. Uh, uh, of a comedy show who sent us to go and perform in a sold out casino comedy show full he put us in you know those truck driver hotels what you formula call one. Form, formula one yeah. and the beds were uh, i'm a double bank and wanted us to share rooms for him to save money Obviously, I didn't perform, and I should have uh, named and shamed, yes. I didn't perform, and fortunately, it works in Pumalanga, and I had a friend in Pumalanga, so I went to, to, to stay over at my friend's and left the next morning. But I was ready to just go and book my own, own hotel, because the level of disrespect in South Africa is just, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, same as the audience yet. Our audience, if not we go to Chris Rock Manch, a South African, South Africans will not question why the ticket is 1,500. South Africans will not even care what they do not understand his uh, accent or his uh, references. To our jokes are not relevant to them. They will not, he will feel the dome. But Tina, yeah. they want free tickets when you are charging 150 rand. So the level of disrespect Akaya, is both from the audience and from I'm a producer. I think we're coming up to an hour. Can we please go out before ooh, Instagram kicks us out and then we'll come right back in because I want to save the video, please. Okay. Thank you.